Hello everyone, good morning. I'm Silvina Moschini. I'm the present chairwoman and founder of Unicoin and Unicorn Hunters. And I would like to start this presentation with a video, a video that will give you a glimpse of what we are doing at Unicorn Hunters by creating a media company that facilitates global equity crowd financing, basically by allowing entrepreneurs to raise money and think of something like Shark Tank or Dragon's Dance, but on steroids. We created a circle of money that evaluate the different entrepreneurs pitching in the company and allowing people from the global audience to invest money in them. We take an equity stakes on the companies that we partic participate in the show, and with this equity stake, we are backing our coin. And I will tell you the whole story in a few seconds if here Detective helped me to play the video. Get ready, world, for a whole new way to invest. Introducing the Unicorn Hunters. Unicorn Hunters. Unicorn Hunters. Unicorn Hunters. Unicorn Hunters. Unicorn Hunters. Boy, do we have a treat for you. A new series says it could actually help viewers make money. Unicorn Hunters is looking for that next billion dollar idea from entrepreneurs. Searching for that billion dollar business, a unicorn. Far UV Technologies has developed Krypton disinfection lighting. Forte is a tech company that enables dims to create a digital experience. The CVAC system is an air vacuum chamber. Mechanical treatment solves climate change. Our technology now has the ability to predict health outcomes and save lives. What concerns me, your lack of ambition. 70 million in three years, that's not much. I love supporting small business, but is this a big enough market? To what degree it's a personal cost for you, and to what degree it's business? Why aren't you already a unicorn? Your gross revenue was $126,000. How are you going to increase that for 2021? Why are you doing this? So what's your why? Let's go, Nick! Can I call my mom? Okay. So as you could see, we do things a little different. We created a media company that allow us to take equity stakes in high growth company potentials, companies that can become a unicorn, to back a cryptocurrency. We look at crypto in a different, in a different way. And we all understand that when a black swan scam, there it comes the unicorns. We have been gone through many different Black Swans events over the last years. The pandemic, the crypto crash, all the economic turndown in the technology industry. And yet, we are here standing, looking for the best that is yet to come. We many times hear that crypto was dead. Actually, Bitcoin was declared dead by the media over 500 times. And today, since the last news of a couple of weeks ago, Bitcoin is standing strong and reach a valuation of almost $35,000 with ups and downs, but a clear path if the regulation would introduce, sorry, if the ETF introduced by BlackRock and other companies stand to institutionalize cryptocurrencies and make the industry as big as $30 trillion. And we have, been this, we have seen this before, and if we think of crypto, we cannot avoid thinking of the natural evolution of the money, from the barter system to the gold standard, to the paper money, to plastic money, to electronic money, and now blockchain technology supporting the currency of the future. In 2019, cryptocurrencies became the basis for the new standards. And I had the opportunity to be in this field for a quite a long time. In 1999, I was part of the leadership team that founded the first internet bank in Latin America. I'm originally from Argentina, and at that time, we built Patagon.com. And Patagon was half a media company, because the media company helped us to reach the audiences, educate the audiences, win their hearts, and win their wallet. 
and half of the other side of the company was a financial destination with banking products, with a supermarket for people to choose whatever banking products they wanted to have, loans, eh, mortgages, etc., and a brokerage firm to allow Latin Americans to trade on the stock market. Patan was selling $785 million in 2000 to Banco Santander Central Hispano and became one of the most remarkable businesses built at that area. But of course, if you think backwards, in 1999-2000, when you go in to see investors and tell them, I'm building an online bank, most likely, as you probably imagine, the answer was like, you are absolutely nuts. You are crazy. This is not going to happen. No one will put their money where they cannot see it in an internet bank. This is absolutely delusion. So today, it's not delusional to think that crypto is the way to the future. We've seen that before with many other companies in addition to ours. We saw probably MySpace that turned into Facebook, Meta, TikTok, Snapchat, many different social media. We saw also with Alta Vista that later on in the next generation, second generation, and I would like to make this difference between what is first gen and what is second gen because we have, seen done, we have seen this over and over again. And Alta Vista became Google. And now we are seeing it, what is happening with traditional cryptocurrencies. Today, there are over 420 million crypto users in the world. There are not many ladies here, but as a woman, I always look at what is happening with ideas of women, power, and money. And crypto is also the way declared by the analysts as the second asset class for investments after fiat currency. So women are investing in crypto as the second asset class after fiat currency. So it's the way to get women into the wall of investment. And perhaps you are not familiar with this number, but 57% of the university's degrees in many different parts in the, the world and in this region are earned by women. So their economic power is increasing. Women make 80% of the business decision purchases in the world. And yet, the world for investment is still very early, but very promising. But we also saw, as we saw with the first generation of companies, that there were many issues in the crypto industry. One of the main issues was the high volatility. So when you ask people, not the experts like yourself, do you like crypto? They say, oh, no, I, I don't really understand it, but it's highly volatile. Uh, no, this is tremendous risk, high risk. And the transparency, it works well for some, but it doesn't work for the majority of people who are actually looking for good business opportunities. So not a lot of people want to see a crypto that is anonymous, that is unregulated, that doesn't have anything backing to support the valuation. Majority of people want to see good investment opportunities. And also the issues associated for the first gen with the gen first generations were related to the illicit use. So we saw in that a big opportunity. And we replicated the model that we had created back in 2000, putting together a media company with a cryptocurrency to fix the issues related to the traditional cryptocurrencies. One was regulated. We created Unicoin and went straight to talk to the US government. And we are a public reporting company under the SEC. And we are regulated under US law. And we are complying and applying to have regulations. For example, here in Dubai, the regulation framework set up by BARA is outstanding. It's very clear. And it's very simple to follow and to understand, which makes it easy for us entrepreneurs to be able to comply. Also, we created the show in which we brought to our show the former treasurer of the United States, who was here in Dubai last year in the same event introducing Unicoin. We invited her to be part of our board. We invited also to be part of our for the former commissioner of the SEC, Roel Vera. So we brought together policymakers. As entrepreneurs, we understood that regulation is a breaker or maker for a company. So we took a very strong stand in being compliant. Asset back, public recording, and audited company. And the last part was the asset back 
component. We took a quick take on high growth companies, as we mentioned in the show, and we'll tell you a little bit more about that, but we also went beyond. We got into other industries using Unicoin to buy different assets. As you could see in our media company that allow us to get to the audience, we have Steve Wozniak, the co-founder of Apple. We have the former speaker of the house, John Berko, as part of our guest. We have Chris Diamantopoulos. If you are a fan of Silicon Valley, the sitcom that you can see in HBO, you most likely recognize the billionaire that plays a very, very interesting character in the show, Lance Bass, NSYNC, also a venture investor, former advisor of the White House, uh, Mo Bella, and many different celebrities that help us to build together this show that allows us to have millions of audience from around the world. And I'm not getting the click, so if you can help me to move to the next one, I'll be very appreciated. So with the shows, we found a very efficient way to facilitate global crowd financing for the companies that we have, but also a very efficient way for us to distribute our messaging and market our coin. So today, the show has an audience of over 300 million in the first season that we aired, including different airlines, including streaming platforms, including open television and media who partner with us to carry the show that we produce in the CBS television city in Hollywood, done by the executive producer of The Masked Singer, who is the number one unscripted TV show in the world. We also use the coin to bring on board celebrities because we understood that the cluster approach, the one-to-many approach, help us to get efficiently to build a global renowned brand. So we believe that building a globally renowned and trusted brand is a key element in the financial industry because it's lack of trust what makes banks collapse. It was lack of trust also who make many of the crypto crisis that we have. So we invited 10 NFL players, five of them part of the NFL Hall of Fame that in the US, which was one of the important markets that we have, are extremely popular to represent our brand and to join us in educating what's the difference between generation one cryptocurrencies and the cryptocurrencies evolve. We also have Juan Pablo Montoya, a triple crown champion Formula One rider as part of our ambassadors, and Sebastian Montoya. And very soon we'll have one of the cars, the Formula Three cars, uh, fully plotted with our, with our brand. And all of that was done with our currency. So we build the clients, uh, we build a currency that allow us to buy equity stakes, to buy other assets, to buy advertising, to create content, to get to the audience, to participate in many different events. We present as well Unicorn last year at the Expo, the US Pavilion. We uh, went all over the world, from Colombia to Argentina to the US, Canada, Saudi Arabia, and of course, here in Dubai, to introduce our project, to introduce a new way of doing things. And we also work strongly with the media. We have a lot of media coverage and recognition from around the world in top publications from all over the world. And we advertise in airports. So we have now this offer that is how we are using the coin to access real estate in many different efforts, including three main airports in New York, in Mexico, in Canada, and so on and so forth. So we use the currency to build assets, to buy assets. We also have visibility in a, a mobility. This is in Miami, where I live, where we have over 27 Tesla Model X car free transportation for people all plotted with unicorns, done in a 100% unicorn deal. And we take, as we said, like equity stakes on high growth companies that are backing unicorn. The companies that are in the show are companies that have potential to become unicorns. We are betting at expanding this portfolio to reach over 200 companies next year, in which we will take equity stake, help them grow, help them raise, help them have massive visibility internationally, but we switch also when the opportunity arises from not only having equity stakes in high growth companies to have a diversified portfolio back in Unicorn into real estate. And that was because many of our clients and investors came to us and told us like, I 
do not understand crypto, but I do understand real estate. And when we were selling our coins in the pre-sale, because we hadn't launched two exchanges, all of this was done with the premises that two things need to be done right. One is the creation of a brand, and the other one was a creation of a portfolio of assets before even hitting the exchanges. Because we saw that many people make the mistake of like rushing the launch because they want to have money fast, but then to sustain the value is extremely difficult. I am a marketer. I led global public relations for Visa and for Compact before becoming an entrepreneur. My co-founder, the CEO of the company, is a former banker. He founded the largest commercial bank in Russia and the largest commodity exchange when he was 23, when they opened, the Soviet Union opened up opportunities, and he then left to the United States. He defected to the United States at that time. So we have a combination of skills that help us to understand the dynamic of this market. So we started to invest in real estate using our own coin to buy real estate. And when I say that, people have a hard time understanding how with a coin that we actually came up with, fabricating the coin, creating money, we were able to buy, the, to, to complete the largest uh, property deal in, uh, in crypto purchase a hotel, a luxury hotel project in Thailand for $335 million. Also, a 600,000 square meter property and luxury resort in Chambury, Thailand. And also, we have made the largest uh, mine operation purchase in Argentina, in Neuquén, in Patagonia, purchasing a copper mine. And probably you don't know about copper, just included as one of the essential minerals in the list of essential minerals in the United States. So we accumulated over $1 billion in real estate assets, signed $1 billion in real estate assets back in our coin. So now, in addition to having the equity stakes uh, in high growth companies, we have real estate assets that are signed back in the company as we prepare to take our company to exchange. We announced the listing in INX. In L Bank, as our partners, we have 10 more exchanges and we plan to list within Q4 of this year in around 10 exchanges from around the world. And the goal is also to take the company to international markets next year, having it listed in all the largest exchanges as well. But we also use high, um, more sophisticated financial products to finance our development. We created a more a strategic financial instrument, including buy now, pay later a collaterals a using real estate to give credit to allow people to buy unicorns five times more because people have assets but they don't have liquidity in general. So we gave them the opportunity to buy Unicoin using their assets. And we created a program of deferred payment in which we sold 500 million in buy now, pay later sales. So we have all the flow of money coming in, not only because we have the asset that can become liquid to repurchase the money and have a better control of the market, but also we have cash coming in. We did this thinking of a media company, Unicorn Hunters, to get the deal flow, to get the audience, to have the visibility, to get the unicorn. So we can ourselves become the unicorn of crypto. We have a boot here, out there. Julian, my colleague here in Dubai, who leads our operations locally and in the region, is uh, going to be available all day, and I will be uh, as well outside. If you have any question, we'll be very happy to answer. Thank you very much. <laughs>